phone, so you'll have to bear with me. Amen. Now, all the rest of you ladies, don't show up here next Sunday with your foot wrapped up in a cast or something. <laughs> I know some of you was thinking it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. I know that, and she knows that, and everybody else knows that, but she still got what she wanted. <laughs> Amen. Are you happy to be here this morning? Amen. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm excited about, about what I feel like the Lord has given us this morning. Acts chapter number 3, verse number 1 is where we'll begin. It's a unbelievably familiar story and uh, uh, we uh, uh, certainly hope that you'll uh, hang with us. I don't want to put anybody to sleep, amen, but just hang with us, probably not much danger of that today, amen, but uh, uh, again, I want to say uh, many of the things that many of you are battling with we're really dealing with in depth on Wednesday nights. And I really, really, really would like to encourage you to try your best to come. Uh, because uh, the Lord is really ministering to people. And uh, uh, amen. Even, even to me, uh, as I bring the word and study, and amen. God's doing great things. He's doing great things among us, isn't he? Amen. Now, Peter and John went up together, everybody say together, together, into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. It's very important for us to realize that they went in together. And them just walking together, Brother Robbie, it wasn't just a geographical thing. It just wasn't because they happened to be in the same place, Brother Pete, but they were together. Unity was an important identifying factor of the original apostolic church. Unity was an important identifying factor of the original apostolic church. Acts 1 and 14 says you don't have to do these, Brother David. It says they continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Acts 2, 1 through 4 tells us uh, they were in one accord in one place when the Holy Ghost fell. Acts 2 and 42 says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. And 2 and 46 says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. These people people were together. Let me tell you something. Stop trying to fight the battle by yourself. You don't have to. Stop trying to go through life by yourself because you don't have to. Say, well, I know the Lord's with me. I'm not talking about the unity that you have with the Lord. I'm talking about the power of the Lord being magnified because of the unity that you have with the brethren. It makes a difference if you've got somebody with you or not. We've got to be unified as a church. Our first verse today demonstrates that unity. Peter and John went together into the temple together to pray at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The ninth hour of the day is 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which was a national time of prayer. The, the liberals would have had a fit in Israel. There was no such thing as separation of church and state. The law of Moses was the law of the land, Brother Pete. And at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it was the time of offering the evening sacrifice. It was a national time of prayer. Everybody stopped whatever they were doing and went to pray. Boy, I wonder how that'd go over here. And a certain man, verse number 2, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb, Somebody tell me, how long has he been lame in his feet? Since he was born. Was carried, kind of like I did for Camille, certain diff certainly different motives, but that's what happened. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. He came and was laid at the gate daily, 
at the entrance or the gate to the temple to ask the church folks for help. Now here's something we got to re realize. When we have situations in the Bible, when we read about somebody in the Bible, we, we give them all kinds of noble characteristics. We decide that, you know, Brother Robbie, that he was such a pitiful, pitiful person. And I agree that he was because he was lame in his feet. But, but we think we don't. Now, he's different than all the beggars we see. Right? Is that fair to say? That if they're in the Bible, they're different. And if the Lord works, the people that we know that are asking for help are all a bunch of losers. But if they're in the Bible, they were sincere. Right? That's how we think. We, nobody's ever thought of this guy as I wouldn't have helped him. If there had been a lame man like that in some of our lives, we would have walked right past him like we have other people. He was no different than folks asking for help. And I did a little research on it, and listen to what would happen. This cat was a professional beggar. Now, granted, Brother David, it was of necessity because he couldn't go out and get a job but he was a professional beggar. And we know this because of two things. He came there every day. What does that tell us? If he wasn't doing some good, he wouldn't be coming there. He's found a hot spot. He's found a spot where he can come shake his cup and it gets filled up because they bring him back every day. If he wasn't doing pretty good, he would have found a different place. Here's the second reason we know that he was a professional beggar. It's because that's what he was well known for. He was recognized as the one that sat at the gate for alms. Brother Chris, when he was healed, they all ran around with wonder and amazement because they recognized him as the one that had a pretty good gig going on at the gate. I dare say I never had that we've never thought of the lame man in those terms. H have we? Never thought of the lame man in those terms. He was just a poor little old pitiful thing sitting there. Brother Kendall, he was the only one identified as the one that sat there every day. Boy, I can tell right now I may have trouble. I may have to turn around to the wall and start preaching. We have to understand that the law for the Jews was the commandments given to Moses. Not the least of which were the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments that we still know. But there were also, I believe, 600 and, somebody help me, 639 or something like that. 613, I think, maybe, different commandments that were given. That Not the least of which was, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Honor your father and mother and so on and so forth. Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. Brother Billy, this was the law of the land in that day. And they were commanded by the law to give to the poor. Deuteronomy 15 11 says, For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Don't y'all think, don't turn me off because you think I'm going to ask for some money because I'm not. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. Is that up there, Brother David? <laughs> well, I'm glad there's some scriptures more important than others, aren't you? The Bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. Nevertheless, it, they were commanded to give to the poor. So here's what had happened. In this time, giving to the poor had become a symbol of one's religious standing. Men gave to be seen. 
which we know was condemned by Jesus Christ, though, don't you misunderstand, he condemned people that, that waved their $100 bill up in the air. He condemned them. He said, that's all the blessing you're going to get is the one where everybody brags on you. But he also sat by and watched what people gave. How do we know that? Because the little woman gave everything she had, and the Lord saw it. However, the lame man and others that were in the same shape as him benefited from folks giving regardless of what spirit they gave it with. So the lame man don't care if you're trying to put on a show or not. He just wants the bucket fill. If you're doing it because you love him and you feel sorry for him, great. If you're doing it because you want people to brag on you, great. I don't care. Just fill her up. Don't you, you can't tell me he was showing up. I sure hope nobody gives me nothing today. No, he wants the bucket filled up. Apparently, one cry of the beggars was the big business of begging. No different today than it was then. Huh? One of their cry was they would hold out their cup and say, bless yourself. By giving to me. Bless yourself. by They made a big deal out of hollering. Now, now keep that in mind. You've got to get this picture. Brother McKinney, they, they all wanted to make a big deal out of it. Because they had to be seen. Because if everybody saw you giving, you were really, really close to God. That was the mindset of people. Their religiousness... That's not a word, but it fits. Was determined by whatever. My God, I can preach right now. Their religiousness was determined by what everybody else thought about them. Now we know that that, that didn't fool Jesus. Because Jesus said on the outside, you're a beautiful sepulcher. But inside, you're full of dead men's bones. Jesus wasn't fooled by that. But they continued that way because we know they didn't care what Jesus said anyway. Right? How do we know that? They killed him. They killed him to shut him up. They didn't kill him for him to be the sacrifice for all mankind. They killed him to shut him up, Brother Robbie. They didn't like what Jesus had to say. So the beggar hollering out loud, bless yourself by blessing me. By giving to me, this played up to the desire of the religious elite by giving them an opportunity to give with great flourish. And so the beggar would sit there and he would holler out, Hey, David Cowart, bless yourself by blessing me. And the, the religious man, not Brother David, of course, would say, <clears throat> I was hoping you'd call my name because I just happened to have some stuff to put in. And he'd make a big big production out of giving. Do you see this picture? Have I painted a picture for you? Now I understand this is totally different than how we've always viewed this story. Totally different. But we have to understand the setting, Brother Pete. We've got to understand the setting. This is what was happening here. Okay. Acts 3 and 3 says, Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. Now, who's Peter and John? There's two of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. This is just two, two of the inner circle. I don't know where James is at. He's probably hitting it big fishing or something. Okay, but Peter and John, he sees them about to go into the temple, ask an alms. Now, the Bible in some way minimizes, it's very unlikely, Brother Robbie, that he said, Psst, Instead, now see the picture. Here's what he would do. They would make a big, it was all a part of the big production. And he said, hey, fellas, bless yourself by giving to me. Now this, I didn't make this up. This comes out of historical books. 
Okay? Bless yourself. Peter and John, they look like a couple of good candidates. They want people to think good of them. Bless yourself by giving to me. Ask an alms. Give me some money. Bless yourself. So they are compelled to give. Verse number 4 says, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Now, y'all going to have to come back next Sunday because I'm going to really do good next Sunday, I promise. You got the picture. What happens to you or I? Will you be honest with me? I'm honest with you. I never lie up here, even if it gets my feelings hurt. What do we do? When we see somebody holding up a sign as a rule. Or we see somebody standing right in our way and we know they're fixing to ask us for something. What do we generally do? Pretend like we don't see them. Huh? Don't matter, they might be standing right in your way. Oh, man. I don't want to feel guilty. Right? Right? So I just pretend like, that's not what happened, okay? Now, he's wanting to continue the big religious production. That's what the the lame man's wanting. That's how the game works, is I let them think they're going to be blessed, and they give me some money. That's how the begging game worked back in those days, okay? But Peter, fastening his eyes on him, said, look. On us. Now we got to understand something here. You, you, you understand that when the Bible was translated, that there may be 50 words that mean look, right? That are translated as look in the English language or fasten. Now here's the deal. When, when the Bible said Peter fastened his eyes on him, that comes from the Greek word atenizo. Atenizo. What word do you think we might get from that? Attention. They fastened their eyes on him. That means to look fixedly, to fasten one's eyes upon, to focus. The word look comes from the Greek word blepo, which means to discern, to perceive. It frequently implies special contemplation. Now, Peter and John stop and they focus on the lame man. Specifically focus. And then they tell him, look at me. Focus on me. Keep that in your mind. Peter focused on him and he spoke to him to focus on them. What's happening right here? Okay. This speaks to the difference in these two disciples than the other religious folks who have just become a means to an end. Namely, money. He's there for the money. To get him enough to make him to come back the next day. But something is different about the disciples. He said, look at us. Not just seeing the outward appearance, but focus on me. Focus on me. I want you to look at me. Why is it so important? You all know what happened. Make the big deal, drop the money in and move on. The the focus never was on the lame man. The focus was on the show. Right? Peter and John said, look at me. Just like I'm looking at you. Why was that so important? What he's saying is, you don't want to miss what I'm about to say to you. And you sure enough don't want to miss what's about to happen to you. 
How many people do we pass during the day's time that we have exactly what they need, but because of a lack of focus on our part and of a lack of focus on their part, uh, we all neglect to receive a miracle from God. It's very important, saints of God, that we get focused. What brings us into focus uh, is the eyes that we're looking through, not through eyes of flesh uh, that says everybody that's asking for help, everybody that need, needs help uh, is in a mess because of their own dumb fault. But everybody that needs help, Brother Peter, is there because of a result of sin. They are there because of a result of something missing in their life. And a Holy Ghost filled person that has been overflowed with the power of the Holy Ghost has the answer to what they need. I'm not sure we believe that. You don't want to miss what I'm about to say to you. And you sure don't want to miss what's about to be done in your life. Saints of God, hear me right now. That's why we cannot fall into a trap of saying cliched prayers or exhortations. We cannot just go through the motions. Peter and John had no intentions of just going up to him and just going through some little ritual prayer, something to fulfill their little sense of duty so they could clap their hands and make their way on into the temple. But the thing was, Brother Kendall, is they got to get down to focus uh, because what I'm about to say has eternal impact, uh, eternal consequences on your life. Uh, we have got to realize, saints of God, we're not giving us something so we can pat people on the head, so we can powder their bottom and make them feel a little better. The Holy Ghost is given to change people's lives. If we had that same confidence in what we had to say to people, if we'd quit worrying about what it's going to cost us in our pocketbook and realize that the God of all creation is the one that blesses us anyway, somebody whose faith is in the right place won't ever have to worry about money. We can't go through the motions of being religious. The world don't need it. Our visitors don't need it. When people show up at an apostolic church, they're going to leave disappointed if we just go through the motions. And God forgive us, I've been guilty. Lord, if I can just make it through this service, next time things are going to be good. Just don't really feel all that up to do today. The folks that we meet each day, the folks that we come in contact with in the grocery store, in the school line, at work, at the dinner table, every one of them have need in their life. The lame man had a need. Can you hear me right now? Said the lame man had a need, and it wasn't a lack of money. The lame man needed to be healed. It wasn't a lack of money. Luke 4 and 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. If there ever was a time that we needed to focus on the needs of those around us and for them to focus on the hope that we can offer them, it is now. It is now. We got to get out of our comfort zone. It was not comfortable for Peter and John to stop and do the work of the Lord. Because, Brother Pete, it takes a dying out to the flesh. The flesh says, as it always has said, this is my money and I've worked hard to get it. The Spirit says, help the poor. The Spirit says, help the needy. 
If it was just as simple as giving a few dollars, uh, many of us could fulfill it. Uh, but their need is not in their pocketbook. Uh, their need is in their soul. Uh, their need is not uh, in their dinner table. The need is in their soul. Uh, we have got to preach uh, that if any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things uh, have become new. We have the anointing. We have the commission. And the need is still there. Acts 3 and 5. And he gave heed unto them. Expecting. Everybody say expecting. We need a revival of expectation. As Brother Wayne Huntley said, and I give him honor because it's his quote, Calvary paid for more than we're getting. Calvary paid for more than we're receiving. He gave them heed. He gave them his attention. He looked and he listened to them. Why did he look and listen to them? Why did he give heed to them? Because he was expecting to receive something from them. What? Now hear me right now. I know I've just blew this Bible story all to pieces this morning. You can go back to teaching it your way tomorrow. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. What does that tell us about the lame man? He was used to getting stuff. He was dependent. Come on. We're getting there. All of these things are right. But what is, okay, let me say it again. I don't know yet. He can in a minute, but just a second. You're right. You're right, but just a second. He gave heed. He gave. Y'all got to get this now because we can't go forward if you don't get it. He gave heed unto them. They said, look at us. And so he did. Why did he look at them? Brother Billy hit on it. Brother Robbie, y'all both just hit on it. Sister Marie, y'all hit on it. Y'all got to get it. Y'all got to get it right. It's a one-word answer. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. He had faith. Not in the Lord yet, but he had faith in the cup. He kept coming to the gate every day. And when people made a big production, he knew what was going to happen. He had faith. He gave heed unto them. Does anybody have any idea? Please, let's not misunderstand. He never expected to get healed. He did not, when he gave heed unto them, expecting something from them, it was not that he was about to get up and walk. But he had faith. Everybody say he had faith. This never does work out like I want it to. Because when I think I'm going to preach really good, it just doesn't. But I got a feeling that if you receive this, this may be the best message I have ever preached. If you receive it. Okay, if you receive it. I nearly had myself a fit last night, Brother David, when it all started coming together. The lame man had faith. He had faith. Okay? He had faith. Do you believe that the lame man had faith? He had faith in the ability of Peter and John to give him something. And no doubt with them saying, look at us. Look at us, which was really no different than what anybody else said. The whole thing was about look at us. He had faith in the ability of these men to give him something. And no doubt, he is, what's he thinking in his mind? I don't believe I brought a big enough bucket today. 
I knew I should have got that bigger can. I had a feeling that this was going to be a kaboom kind of day. I won't be eating McDonald's tonight. Maybe buckets of gold and silver. He might have hit the lottery. He gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them. It's important to realize that he had faith. But then, Acts 3 and 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Now we got to understand something else too. It doesn't mean I don't have enough to share with you. It means I ain't got none. Okay, which has blown up the ideology of the lame man. What you mean you ain't got no gold? Huh? Now think about this just a minute. Well, well, hold up a minute. You just got me all excited. Silver and gold have I none. But then he says, but such as I... Don't get too excited now because you can't miss this. You can't miss this. It's just so hard for me not to go nuts right now. Silver and gold have I none. Because that's where his focus was. But such as I have... Give I thee. Now what just happened? Come on, I got to pull this out. The lame man gave heed unto them, expecting. If you think I acted a fool on the golf course, brother, you ain't seen nothing yet. And I won't be embarrassed after today either. But such as I have, give I thee. Everybody say the lame man had faith. Where was his faith? In the ability of them to give him some money. He. So what did Peter just do? That's what I thought too. Think, think about this, Brother Terry. That's what I've always said. I've always preached. Look at here. Silver and gold I don't have. That's where his focus was. But such as I have, give I thee. Don't, don't read the next part yet. Silver and gold, what was silver and gold? That's what he was focused on. That's where his faith was. And Peter said, I ain't got none. Everybody say the lame man had faith. Say it one more time. The lame man had faith in the power of gold and of silver. Silver and gold, I don't have. But, such as I do have, give I thee. What did Peter just do? Say it. He showed him true faith. I thought you said it. I was fixing to come hug you and give you a kiss and give you the microphone to finish it up. All he did was take the faith the lame man had And redirected it somewhere else. He took it from the silver and gold. And he said, such as I have, give I thee. 
Where did he take his faith to? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. He didn't just... He didn't just tell him that where your faith was was wrong. He gave him another option. We're really good at damning and condemning people where they're at and telling them what they got's wrong, telling them how they've messed up their life. But we've got to get better at giving them a better option. We've got to get better at redirecting their faith. He declared where his faith should now be. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care where your faith is. Uh, I'm telling you this morning where your faith needs to be. When your baby's sick in the nighttime, you lay hands on their little head and you say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, I command this disease to leave her body and by faith, Brother David, it'll leave. Uh, Stop having faith in all these other places and get it where it needs to be. The world has faith. Everybody say the world has faith. Oh, Lord. Where is it at? They have faith in a bottle. What is their faith? Come on now. You've seen them. How many of you have ever seen a wine hole stumble out, stumble out of a car? Somebody drove them down in there too, slobbering at the mouth as they can't even find the door handle, trying to get their way into the package store or into Casey's or into Ramey's, clattering their hands. Under. Why do they drink? Why? I come from a family of alcoholics. If it wasn't for the Lord, my dad would have, I wouldn't even have had a family. My daddy was a drunk. But God delivered him. Why do people get drunk? Why do people get high? Why do people pop pills? Because they got faith in the bottle that will release them. They got faith in the pill that will make them feel better. They got faith in a joint because they can get high on life. They can get excited. They can feel good. They have faith. Oh, you can't, come on now. Young person, young, young gal gets out and gets her lowest cut blouse on, one that shows off everything up here and everything down here, gets some shorts on where her booty hangs out, uh, goes around trying to do all stuff, trying to pick up a man. Why does she do that? She's got faith in a feeling. She's got faith uh, that when I crawl in bed with him, uh, I feel accepted. I didn't cuss, did I? Is that not true? They've got faith. Why do they get their self all painted up and all made up and all dialed up? Because they've got faith in their attraction to take them to a place of contentment. Oh, Lord. The world has faith. They've just got it in the wrong things. It's our job. Can I tell you, it's our job to take that faith. Because you're looking for a release, guess where you can find it? You're looking for acceptance, guess where you can find it? You're looking for peace and contentment, guess where you can find it? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our responsibility is not to kill that faith, but to redirect it. Such as I have. Such as I have. I must have that faith in order to impart that faith. And he took him by the right hand. Brother Billy, this old boy's going to be healed whether he wants to or not. And he reached down and took him by the right hand. He spoke faith into his life. And he reached down and took him by the right hand. 
and lifted Ladies and gentlemen, don't you think that the little hoochies and the drug addicts and the winos have had enough people pushing them down, have enough pounding them down? Don't you think that people have made bad decisions, have had enough people spitting on them and talking about them and running them down? You know what they need? They need somebody to lift them up, somebody that can give them hope beyond something that's in the bottom of a bottle or in a pill or in the back seat. They need something that will give them hope that will last forever. And immediately, and immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. You know something? I'm glad I serve a God that he didn't try to heal the lame man from a toothache. He didn't try to get rid of his headache. He didn't try to make his backside feel better where he's been sitting down. But he went right where the problem was, Brother Pete. And that's the God I serve. He'll go right where the problem is. He'll go right to the root cause of the problem. And by faith in the name of Jesus Christ, you can immediately receive strength where you're weak. This was the need. His feet and ankle bones needed strength. And 3 and 8 says... And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Can I just say in one word what my brother did? He got off of his seat and started testifying. Is there anybody in the house ever been touched by the power of the Holy Ghost? Maybe we need to be reminded what it felt like when the Lord reached down or our brother or sister reached down and lifted us up the first time. If your praise is went and hid, if your worship is went and hid, maybe you need to take another trip to the gate and remember what it was like when the power of God got on you the first time and you walk a little bit and you leap a little bit and you praise God a little bit. Where's your praise went? And leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Notice this. Oh Lord. When his need was met. When Peter shared such as he had. Nobody. They didn't have to say. Go ahead brother. Praise him. They didn't have to encourage him to praise God. But immediately, Brother Billy. Why is it that when I talk about all the things that can happen, we can clap and shout and stand up and holler, but when I start talking about how we need to praise him for what he's already done, we just sit there. Maybe our faith's not where it needs to be. Because if our faith is still where it was, I'm still going to demonstrate what it was like when he met my need. I am going to declare. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to declare. He leaped, he stood, he walked, he leaped, he stood, he walked, and entered with them. Everybody say, with them. You want your church to grow? You want our church to grow? You want to have some more of us? Start giving away. Start giving away. Faith built a relationship. 
The need just provided the opportunity. The needs of those in the world are many. Therefore, the opportunity for miracles is limitless. The question we have to ask ourselves is, do I have it to give? Where did Peter get it? You know, Brother David, I just realized something today or yesterday or maybe it was Friday whenever I was studying for this. I just realized something. Peter was with Jesus Christ, ate with him, walked with him, fished with him, rode in the boat with him, heard him teach the Beatitudes, ate with the 5,000 and the 4,000, was there when Lazarus come out of the grave. But when they asked him in Pilate's judgment hall, are you one of them? He said, nope. So you know what? It wasn't just hanging around religious folks that changed Peter's life. It wasn't even sitting at the feet of Jesus that changed Peter's life. It wasn't the teaching of Jesus that changed Peter's life. But ye shall receive power. But ye shall receive power. When? After. After the Holy Ghost gets on you. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Who is me? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Give me 3 and 11, Brother David. And as the lame man which was healed Held Peter and John. How many of you noticed that he wasn't scared to run and grab a hold of them? Why did he do that? Why did he do that, Brother Pete? He was thankful for what they gave him. You know what? I doubt very, a matter of fact, I know for 100% fact that he never went running to nobody that filled the bucket up. But he ran and hailed Peter and John. And all the people. Everybody say all the people. Ran together unto them. In the porch that is called Solomon's. That's a a porch that was on the side of the temple. Greatly wondering. Now, I just got to tell you something. That ain't is the kind of wondering that says, hmm. There was no question in, in this wondering. But that word comes from the same Greek word that means amazement. They ran Thinking it up or what? Look, listen. They ran, all the people ran together unto them, greatly wondering what happened. They just, this is a result. This is a result of Peter and John giving something away. See, we've been praying for revival to come down from heaven. We've been praying for revival to draw people in. This is the early church. This is the apostolic church. They just had the Holy Ghost just a short time. Where did it come from? He that believeth on me as the scripture has said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. All they did was begin to let out what God had given them. They greatly wondered. Next verse. And when Peter saw it. He answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness? Let's stand. 
as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life. But it don't stop there. But he said, whom God hath raised from the dead. Whereof, now listen, you got to catch this, whereof we are witnesses. Somebody tell me who was at the tomb when Jesus rose. Nobody. They didn't, Brother Pete, they did not see him rise. They only saw him when he came, Brother McKinney, and revealed himself unto them. But Brother Rice, Peter is saying we are witnesses of the resurrection. That's what he gave away. Because if the spirit that brought Christ forth from the grave dwell in you, it will also quicken your mortal bodies. And his name, and his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold all things have become new. I'm speaking to two different groups of people this morning. I'm speaking to those that are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and need to learn to let it operate through you. It ain't the preacher that does it because the Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. And it says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You get power when you receive the Holy Ghost. And the other group I'm talking to is the group that have you've been trying to find completion in so many things. You're not going to find it. You're not going to find it in a pill. You're not going to find it in a bottle. You're not going to find it in a needle. You're not going to find it in a bag. You're not going to find completion or happiness anywhere but in Jesus Christ. Because he's the only one, Brother David, that overcame the world. He's the only one. He is the only one that overcame the world. Brother Rice, what did he say? In the world, you have tribulation. That means you're going to have problems. The same thing you've been looking for answers all these other places. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He defeated the world so that you and I can have victory. We have to redirect their faith, saints. They've got faith. They're just looking in the wrong place. They've got it in the wrong place. That's why it's so important that we be effective witnesses, not just with our lips but with our faith. Let's lift our hands and praise the Lord this morning. Talk to the Lord. If there's anybody that believes, anybody that believes God can do for you what he did for the lame man, your problem may not be ankle bones and and feet problems. Your problem may be a problem of the heart, but God can heal you in the same manner. In the same manner, it's the power of the Holy Ghost that changes a life.